Hey guys, so I thought for today's video I might try something a little bit different. Now, I've talked about the idea of de-googling on this channel before, the idea of just reducing our reliance on Google services. Now, there's various different reasons why one might want to take a step back from Google, and I'm not going to go into those reasons in this video. Uh, I might sort of do a video further on down the road talking about that, but I think you can guess from the, the word that I use, reliance, there as, as, as uh, where I'm coming from in regards to this equation. But uh, when it comes to sort of the values of this channel I tend to just like to talk a little bit about my perspective my opinion on things and uh, you know stuff that I've discovered and, and, and all that kind of stuff and, and, and really just sort of allow you guys to sort of think for yourselves and um, and I hope that that sort of comes through in a lot of my videos I never want to be that person to tell you how to think or tell you what to do but really just present you with some options that you may or may not necessarily be aware of so I thought in terms of de-googling on the mobile platform, specifically Android, it seems a little bit more difficult than it might be on Linux-based operating systems. So I thought that I might take a shot at the F-Droid challenge. Now, I don't know if this is a real thing. I, in fact, I, I doubt it. But um, the idea of not using any Google services whatsoever on your mobile phone and just seeing what you can make of the F-Droid app store and the, the various uh, stuff that the F-Droid app store can provide. So I decided to completely factory reset my phone today and, inst and, and not even bother even signing in to Google on, um, you know, on, on first boot. And you can actually skip, uh, you can actually skip signing into any Google service whatsoever. Now, of course, my email account is not with Gmail, so that um, puts me ahead. And I'm not going to use any of the, uh, the YouTube apps because, uh, to be honest, using them through the PC is, is you know, using th them through my desktop PC is what I tend to do uh, naturally anyway. So um, in certain applications, um, I'm not going to necessarily miss it. And I don't, ne I don't need anything that requires me to sign into the Google services off the bat. So today I'm just going to go through some of the application choices that I made and uh, and why I made them and, and, and all that kind of uh, business. So as you can see here, I have the uh, basic uh, background wallpaper and, you know, uh, sort of the desktop, if you will, of my phone screen. And I've got some of the, the, the applications there. Some of them I've left as default because Whereas I could, there are alternatives in the F-Droid App Store. I, I'm going to try and keep it to a degree of, you know, uh, familiarity there for the sake of actually keeping my phone as usable and comfortable as possible. But none of these services require me to sign in to Google or anything like that. So as you can see here, I've got um, Notepad, Feeder, Slim Social for Twitter. That's not there, and OSM, which is Open Street Maps. So in f uh, what I can actually do is uh, go into through the App Store there. But I'll just cover these ones first. Notepad is just a basic Notepad application. Uh, when I just you know need to make a note of something, it's just nice to have something there on the desktop that I can touch and then just uh, pull up you know and, and and write down a note. Incredibly useful. There are like a dozen apps on the Android App Store that do this. Uh, I just picked this one because it's just one that feels just a, a little bit in more intuitive than the rest of them but to be honest there are a handful of good um, note-taking applications there um, and all I want it to do is just take notes locally I don't need anything to sync to the cloud uh, if a note is that important I'll just copy it across to to my desktop when I need to but it's really just something that's just light and easy to use uh, feeder is an RSS reader now I've been trying to reduce the amount of feeds in general um, you know, in terms of uh, our, our information diet, as it were, because I, I do kind of feel that it's just very easy, especially on, in the mobile space, that you can just just overload yourself with information. And I think one of the negative side effects of that is while overexposing yourself to information means that you're less likely to take any of it in. And I always find that one of the things I like about books is because they are such such you know longer, because you need to be more engaged in reading them. You're actually more, uh, or at least I feel that I'm actually taking in more information, especially when the author is given the space to actually explain, um, you know, a lot more of the information that they're providing there. And, you know, long form content like written media, I, I just find that it, for me, at least personally, uh, helps me to, to absorb a lot more information than short bullets of information like tweets or, or like a lot of stuff that you find in RSS feeds. Now, when it comes to like things like tech news and stuff that I really um, specifically want to uh, be on the pulse of, then 
I uh, then I'll put in um, an RSS feed into the into the feed reader, but uh, not like any website that updates too often because I just don't want to be flooded with information. Just something that's uh, a, you know a nice uh, measurable amount or a, a nice digestible amount of information uh, going through through my uh, my feed as well. And I have considered actually taking the RSS reader off my phone entirely because it can be such a comfortable distraction when you're looking for something to do or looking for something just to, to distract you for a moment. Uh, I find myself just going to that feed reader option when I you know, really want to perhaps be more engaged in the environment that I am. But um, that's just a personal choice there. Slim Social for Twitter. Now, this is a, a nice little application. It is effectively just a... Um, it's just an application that takes you straight into the Twitter website. It's the, it's a Twitter web app in, you know, outright. Um, I, I haven't found a way to get the notifications to work on it, but to be honest, I don't really want not notifications on Twitter anyway. Uh, so whenever I want to check for any, um, uh, you know, direct messages or, uh, you know, anything else, to be honest, Twitter, tw uh, the direct messages is the only thing I use Twitter for anyway. Otherwise, I'd completely close my account, which is one of the, one of the reasons why it's privated is because you don't, you know, if I'm only using it for direct messaging, then I don't need it for status updates or anything like that. So, um, and one of the things I do actually notice about the Slim Social for Twitter client is that it actually uses significantly less battery. So uh, you do have significantly less customization options with it, but it's Twitter, who cares? So um, yeah, the Slim Social actually is a really good application, whether or not as, as an alternative to what's available in the Play Store as well. So uh, yeah, I do actually recommend that one. Open Street Maps. This is really good because it actually allows you to download them. So if you're going on a on a trip somewhere where you're not sure about the internet connectivity, you can actually download maps of, of where you're going in advance. And I actually found that that not only loads up faster, but also more reliably and is just generally, I find it better than, than Google Maps. Now, Google Maps does allow you to download specific areas of um, of, of, of maps to use offline, but OpenStreetMap, I just feel that it's more designed to have more. Uh, it's, it's designed to have maps downloaded in, in you know, and it's design. And the whole application is designed to work around that. So it's significantly less reliant on uh, your, on, you know, being connected to the internet, which is something that I, I, um, I think is really good. So anyway, these, this is my app screen. There aren't too many, and I no doubt will install more over time. Uh, some of these that I couldn't disable, but you may may notice. And if I scroll down to the next page, I've actually disabled a lot of the Google applications. I disabled Gmail. I disabled the Play Store. So uh, what have I got here? I've got um, DAV Droid, and I am using the standard Android email client now because I use Postio which I do actually recommend that's a really good email service they use all open source software they treat their employees really really well and they're an environmentally friendly organization there's more information about that on their website you do have to pay a euro a month which isn't really that much considering what you get out of it and you do actually have a support line as well and it is actually really quite nice that if you ever get into trouble with your email that you can actually uh, reach out for help so that's something that I'd really do appreciate with Postio but I think it's just worth the euro a month if you just want to support open source applications in a more serious environment. They do have a lot of encryption options as well, if that's your jam. So I use DAV uh, Droid because it synchronizes your contacts and your calendar with Postio as well. It's not an essential for me. I'm just happy to use an offline calendar or an offline um, or, or to, to copy my contacts across. It's really not that, that great shakes. I'm not meeting dozens of people a day and, and need to keep my contacts synced. I have a small circle of friends that, that I really keep in touch with using uh, email and, and phone and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if it's there, I'll use it. And it is nice just to be able to sync up my, um, my calendar, my contacts, and of course, my email with IMAP on the email client. So it is, is a bit of a faff to set up, but thank God Postio has good documentation for it. That's all I'll say. Obviously, I got the F Droid store there. Firefox Claw. Basically, what it does, it's not actually available directly through the F Droid store. Uh, it actually, the what you get in the F Droid store is like a downloader and updater, and then it goes to the uh, Firefox website and then downloads Firefox Claw and then sets it up for you. I really like it. It's a nice small browser um, from obviously Mozilla Firefox team, and um, yeah, can't. Uh, yeah, I can't say anything wrong with it, actually. It's designed to be lightweight and more privacy respecting, and I really would like to see them bring out a desktop version, but I haven't really heard anything in the works about that. Q 
KeyPass Droid. This is so that I can access my um, password database. Now, I don't keep the password database on the phone, uh, but if I need to sign into any services, I will then, you know, sort of copy the file across and then remove it or use it on a, on a USB. Um, and that way, everything logged in, it stays logged in, but there's, you know, there's no reliance on online services and I'm not storing the passwords you know, with my phone either. So um, what I'll do is I'll have um, I'll have like a like a USB thing like this, and I'll plug it into the phone whenever I need to log in, and I'll open up the database and find the right password. It's a little bit more convoluted than most password managers, but to be honest, considering how few things I actually log into on the mobile platform, um, it's fine and it is nice. Um, you know, it's nice and secure. But there's only one or two services like email, for example, that I'll sign into, and once you've saved the login, you're uh, you're pretty much all good. Uh, now the FM radio actually came with the phone and for some reason you can't get rid of it. Uh, I've never used it at all. Um, I'm going to use the standard messaging app. I've got, obviously I talked about the notepad. That gallery there is the standard ga uh, gallery app for my Android phone as well. Orbot and Orfox. Um, I have noticed that Orbot, which is what connects you to the um, through, you know, c connects you to the Tor network, uh, is actually it made some significant improvements since the last time I used it. I'm not a big user of Tor, but I um, am no longer going to be using my VPN because of the App Store. Um, it requires an app from the Google Play Store. Uh, if I do feel that I actually need it, then I'll pull down the um, the package file itself uh, separately. So you don't necessarily need the App Store to go out and get it. But I'm just going to see if Orbot is going to be able to uh, to, to work uh, for me in that regard. To be honest, in the overwhelming majority of cases, I use l like Wi-Fi connections that I am already reasonably comfortable with. I don't like connect to Starbucks Wi-Fi or anything like that. In fact, I don't even know where the nearest Starbucks is. So if I don't go around connecting to, um, to random Wi-Fi networks, so I'm not going to be too... Uh, concerned about uh, not having my VPN with me at the moment. If I do get a little bit concerned, I do have other options outside of the Play Store, but I'm just going to um, see what see where it takes me with this. Uh, then I've got Red Moon. Red Moon is incredibly important and useful. It's one of those. It's like basically Redshift on um, for Android. It during the times that you set, or you can have it set to like day, you know, like daylight hours or whatever, it puts the red glow on the screen so that it means that it doesn't keep you up all hours of the night. Or if like the last thing you do before go to bed is check your phone uh, and that blue light doesn't just sort of, you know, push you awake or whatever, it's nice to have that nice soothing red glow in the later hours of the day so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't sort of trick your brain into thinking that it's, uh, it's earlier than it is. Uh, privacy browser. This is a great little privacy browser tool as well, also all available in the um, F-Droid store, of course. What I really like about Privacy Browser is that it turns off JavaScript by default, and if you do come across a website that does require JavaScript, there's just a little icon in the top right-hand corner. You just pop that, and you then have JavaScript. Interestingly enough, when it comes to browsing the mobile web, a lot of the mobile web version, a lot of the mobile versions of most websites actually don't require JavaScript. I'm actually quite surprised um, how far, how much of the web that I can browse not using JavaScript. So um, yeah, Privacy Browser, that's nice, and I'm using that if I'm not using, you know, if I'm not browsing through Tor. So it's kind of almost my go-to default browser, um, just because it doesn't have JavaScript, so it makes things nice and fast and a little bit safer, uh, but also it gives me that flexibility that if I do come across a website that uh, is broken by not being able to use JavaScript, I can just uh, fix that in a moment's notice. Um, I've got SAND or SAND, just just a very basic compass um, application. Uh, to be honest, I find compass is a really useful tool for, for navigation. Um, especially out here in the sticks where if you you know just want to go in a general direction to find a place um, compasses are just really quite useful I know nowadays with like location settings and uh, and, and and you know open street maps and all that kind of stuff uh, a lot of people might consider the idea of a compass to be redundant uh, because you've just got a you know a, a map that plots you on it specifically where you are at that given time uh, really easily that many people might think that that makes the compass redundant but sometimes if I just want to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction being able just to flip open the a compass and just check is, um, is 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 really quite useful. Also, doesn't require you to turn location on because the um, orientation of the phone is for some reason it's it's something that's 
readily available information without permissions needed which some people consider a little bit worrying but yeah like I say being able just to pull out a compass and check that I'm not heading in the opposite direction to which I intend is you know just a little bit useful I use that from time to time just nice simple uh, you know nothing uh, nothing fancy there and I do kind of appreciate apps that do one thing and one thing well uh, one thing and one thing well um, the only other thing that I think um, is uh, Trackbook. Trackbook isn't something I use very often, but it's very useful to have uh, when I do. Basically, uh, if you're in a place where you're not entirely, sh you know, you're not entirely sure of the lay of the land, uh, what you can do is you can turn Trackbook on, and it draws a line where you go from where you turn it on. So uh, most people might use it to find their way back to a car in a particularly large car park if so they don't have to remember where they parked it. But also if you're on like a nature trail or something like that, um, you always um, know the way that you came. So at the worst case scenario, you can backtrack using this app because it draws your entire journey behind you, which I think is really quite useful. And I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I really quite appreciate the very simple navigation apps as well, um, as well as the ones that are a bit more, you know, full featured like um, OpenStreetMaps. It's just nice to have a few navigation tools because to me, that's what one of my primary uses of my mobile phone is, is, is that when I travel, uh, it's usually, um, you know, usually I load on like maybe a couple of podcasts or TV shows, um, which I can obviously still do with uh, F-Droid. And then just being able to have, you know, like a map or some kind of navigation tools just to make sure that I don't get lost. Um, other than that, um, I probably wouldn't even need a phone, really, moreover anything else. Um, I'd probably just have like a Nokia 3310. I think I've still got my Nokia 3310 lying around. And truth be told, I've given some consideration to picking it up again because, um, uh, yeah, I like, you know, I, I kind of like a lot. Uh, well, I'll probably leave that for another video, but I often feel that, you know, smartphones m can sort of increase our reliance on technology and, and increase our reliance on uh, easy solutions. Uh, while our skills for uh, sort of navigating the real world without a smartphone become, uh, you know, sort of lost to the sands of time. So um, I think that's about it for me today. Um, but yeah, I uh, yeah I'm going to be taking the F-Droid challenge, and probably in about a month's time, uh, I'm going to be making another video telling you about how I got on and whether or not I decided that it was uh, a living hell and that I had to go back to Google, or whether or not it's um, it's just as easy uh, as a, a, you know just as easy to use my phone without Google as it is with Google. Um, I was looking around at um, some of the other open source operating systems available for mobile, but because I don't have a particularly well-known uh, model of phone, and I ain't going to go out and spend, what, 300, 400, 500 quid on a, a Galaxy or a Pixel or anything like that. For, as far as I'm concerned, that's way too much to spend on a phone. My Eula phone cost me like 130 quid, and... Um, and yeah, you know, there might not be many Copperhead OS, you know, type distributions that that are uh, compatible with it. But I'm not going to go out and spend an extra like three or four hundred quid just so that I can have an open source operating system. It's still Linux based. You don't need to sign in to Google services to um, to make the most of it. And hopefully, um, we're going to see how well I do on a de-Googleified Android phone. So uh, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below, of course. Have any of you guys attempted this as well? Truth be told, it doesn't seem like too much of a feat. The only applications I think I'm really going to miss are Discord. Um, and I'll just check that on the desktop or I'll log in through the website if I have to. Uh, but truth be told, Discord, you know, it's it's it's, it's hardly going to uh, break my phone experience if I'm if I'm not being if I'm not able to access, you know, my Discord stuff. Um, it's not a service that I'm particularly attached to, but it's a, it's a service that a lot of people I know use. Um, and it's you know not attached to one of the big um, tech giants. So I do actually quite like uh, Discord for those purposes. But um, but I'll get by without it, I reckon. So, um, yeah, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, of course, down in the comment section below. I always, hearing the, uh, I always enjoy hearing those. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.